Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And you know, friends, we've been seeing all types of comments coming up on the channel. Uh, quite a few of them just flat out saying that we are Russian propaganda or a Russian shield. And I think the facts are totally skewed on people that think like this. But let me just kind of clarify, and we're going to really get into this today, because I realize many people have the false conception that Russia is Gog of Magog and that it is the Russian Empire that's going to come down and sweep through and destroy Israel. When it's actually to the contrary, and there are two schools of thought on that, and I do believe that Erdogan, President Erdogan of the Turkish government there, is the very one that will be the Gog of Magog, or the Magog, the military force, along with all these Arabic nations uh, and whatever NATO members are going to participate with him, will actually be the ones that come against Israel. And as I put up here, this was the meeting between President Erdogan and Pope Francis that took place here, uh, I guess, a week or so ago. It's been a little while back now. Turkey's Erdogan meets with Pope Francis during Rome visit. And the Pope, of course, gives him this gift of a peace prize, so to speak. It says Pope Francis gifted Turkey's receptive of Erdogan an eagle, uh, excuse me, an angel of peace during Erdogan's visit to the Vatican. And I thought to myself, how absurd could that be? Now, the two don't get along on every issue, but one thing they do see eye to eye on, and that happens to be none other than Jerusalem. It says, attention then turned to the situation in the Middle East with particular reference to the status of Jerusalem. It added, despite previous disagreements, the two leaders found common ground on Jerusalem after the U.S. unilaterally recognized the city as the capital of Israel. Now, again, it's a good thing that uh, President Trump recognizes Israel as uh, Jerusalem as Israel's capital. But at the same time, there are a lot of other forces working in the background that are definitely have a different agenda altogether. And this is something we're going to find out as we dig into this from a prophetic standpoint today. And as far as Russia and the United States. My biggest issue that I've had when it comes to Russia and the United States, knowing that President Putin is not no angel by no means, but nonetheless, he has an agenda. He has a desire for the uh, gas and oil in Syria, just like the United States does. But really and truly, when it comes down to the end of the day, these two nations, these two superpowers are being pitted against one another and Rome and behind the scenes is the one pitting these two together to fight it out, to bring an end to the two nations, the two most powerful nations on the earth, to destroy nationalism. How many times have we shared that with you here on Israeli News Live with the insider that was close to Erdogan that said one of the New World Order agendas was to destroy nationalism. This is why they want to disarm America. And so many people falling for this, this whole idea. Illinois, from what I understand now, is uh, saying that they want to disarm any 19, uh, excuse me, 18 to 20 year olds, any semi-automatic weapons. They are getting ready to totally take your weapons away and do away with your constitutional rights. And there's a reason for that. The New World Order cannot have any opposition. Once they destroy nationalism, they have to make sure no one else has weapons to be able to fight back uh, on a New World Order agenda. So everything, all the cards are playing into position right now. And unfortunately, too many people are going to be duped into this and never realize what happened from the start now. Uh, and of course, when it comes to the United States and inside of Syria and stuff, all this is nothing but a show. It is only being, it's just being played out, friends. We're, we're being fooled from the very beginning. And there's a lot of people out there that are trying to get you to go along with the idea that we have to, des to, to destroy Syria and that this is part of the agenda. What we're supposed to do is to destroy Syria. Maybe what I should do, just real quick, out of argument's sake here. Let's look this up, all right? Moses dividing the, the land of Israel. It's actually Joshua that did it between the tribes, and we want a map of this. We need to look at what was given to our people, and we can't go by the fact that God gave uh, Abraham the promise from the Nile to the Euphrates because 
Abraham's children also include the Arabic people, as well as the house of Israel that has been living in the Middle East as well. It's many of them as Christian believers now. All right, so let's quickly, if we can find an image on this real fast, some of the ancient biblical lands, and here's one right here. And this is something that really kind of gets me, is because it is totally, uh, totally rejected the idea of what land belongs to whom. All right, and I don't know whether or not we can see this land well enough here. But Jordan and, of course, parts of Syria are in the occupied lands of Manasseh, as we can see here on the map. Uh, let me see. That's not one that you can see well enough there. Here we go, right here. We have up near the Galilee, which is considered to be the Golan, not Damascus whatsoever. Mind you, if you look at the map here in this northern area, Damascus is completely outside of that. But we have Manasseh right here which would be the Golan Heights, belongs to Manasseh. And, and Dan, we have Naphtali, Asher, Zub, Zubalin, we have Ishkar, we, of course you have Gad, which is now part of Transjordan now, you have Reuben, also part of the country of Jordan. And what's interesting to me is they're trying to make Israel a Jewish state, but yet Judah has the southern portion of Israel, that is true, and you have to remember, besides Judah, the house of Judah was made up of Judah, it was made up of the Benjamites, uh, which is just to the north there, which is uh, Jerusalem area, that area there. And, uh, and of course you had Levi. Levi was never given a, a particular land. But all the northern parts of the land that Israel is inhabiting right now actually belongs to the house of Israel. We have no claims to Syria. And in fact, even in Jordan, not the part where Reuben and Gad should have, that should belong to the, the commonwealth of Israel, we would say. But we were told to leave the children of Moab and Ammon alone. These are the children of Lot. It was given to them as a possession. So we have no rights to this land. All right? Syria is the mothers of Israel. And it's also the fortress of Ephraim, which were the believing Christians that had that have been there for the last nearly 2,000 years. And Isaiah 17 says that you will destroy the fortress of Ephraim when you destroy Damascus. All right? So we're really getting completely outside of the biblical mandate of what God has, has called on. Now, I want to look at some of the news things that are going on so we can kind of bring things into perspective to show you what's happening. Now, first off, let's just look here real quick. Uh, Amman, which is Jordanian news, it says breaking Syrian army stopped three attempts by militants to use chemical weapons, according to the Russian DM. Now, this is thing. This is part of the deep state agenda. I don't know if President Trump is even aware of this, but one thing I do believe that President Trump, he's being fed all the propaganda as well to get him to do a war between Russia and the United States. And Putin, no doubt, is being fed all the garbage on his end. Does he really realize that, that, that Trump, uh, that the deep state and Trump are not maybe one and the same? I'm sure some people believe that Trump is part of the deep state. All right, I'm not going to argue the point. I'm waiting to see how this is all going to play out. But truly, the two superpowers of the world are being pitted against one another. Now, speaking of that, let me take you real quick to Isaiah. I have it pinned up way over here. This is a famed a, a fame biblical scripture that most people believe referred to the Twin Towers. I thought that was interesting. Uh, actually, I know the very uh, man that actually first originally brought that out. Uh, this is from Isaiah chapter 30, I believe it is. Uh, and we're looking at verse 25, but let's look at verse 24 and then go to verse 25 and 26. The oxen likewise and the young asses that till the ground shall eat savory provender, which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And there shall be upon every lofty mountain and upon every high hill streams and water courses in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall. 
Now the towers, people take that as being the twin towers, and it could be also prophetically speaking of the twin towers, because we know out of Egypt I call my son applies to both uh, the nation of Israel leaving Egypt, coming out of bondage, as well as it applied to Yeshua when he came back from Egypt after uh, the death of the king that was killing all the children. Now, but if we back up and we look at this, it literally in Hebrew, it says, Benefa Migdalim. Migdalim is a word for tower, but it's also a word for, the, for a power, a strength. Like the Migdal Eder, as we find out over in the book of Micah. God was angry with the leaders of Israel. But in this case here, there is a falling of the powers. And, it's, it's, and when this happens, will be in the day of great slaughter. I believe it is a nuclear war between the United States and that of Russia. And it says, moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. No doubt the battle will be at night. Now, of course, one side of the earth will probably be daytime, but you know, there is part of the time where Moscow is dark and the United States is dark as well. So keep that in mind. So it says, moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. The light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days in the day of the Lord. Bindeth up the bruise of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. All right, so could this be a, a, a scripture prophetically speaking about the fall of the two world superpowers, Russia and the United States? Could be. Now, let's go back though. We started off sharing with you Erdogan meeting with Pope Francis. This was on uh, Made for Minds is the article where I picked it up at, but I'm just trying to remember, see if I, they show the date of when this happened here. Um, I don't see that date in this article, but we know it's just a couple of weeks ago, something of that effect there, not too long ago when he met with him. All right. Then we have also here this article from Sputnik, red line for all Muslims. Erdogan vows not to give, on, give up on Jerusalem issue. Now watch what he says here. The Turkish president has reiterated his adamant opposition to Donald Trump's controversial decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital, underscored that the ancient city is too precious for Muslims. On Saturday, Recep Tayyip Erdogan called on Washington and Tel Aviv not to make any steps that could escalate the tensions over the disputed city. Now, mind you, friends, I'm not against the Turkish people when I'm saying these things. I'm not against America when I say things about the United States. If anything, we have to thank General Wesley Clark in the United States for letting us know that there was an agenda to take down all these Middle Eastern nations. And oddly enough, think about what side of the fence they were on in the battles. Okay, but <laughs> I, I can't really say why all the wars were like this and why they were even being brought together to begin with. But now I'm beginning to really start to see the picture come more and more clear. But anyway, he says here, the victory we gained, this is Erdogan speaking, on the issue of Jerusalem is an indicator of the many things we can achieve together through solidarity. Erdogan noted while praising the UN resolution that condemned Washington's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. He also noted that the blackmailing and threats prior to the voting have been futile, referring to the US President Trump's threat to cut aid to the UN as well as a member states that voted to condemn the US decision in the General Assembly. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, and I think, yeah, I did bring the article up as well. Erdogan is trying to galvanize 57 Arabic countries to go against uh, Jerusalem in a war. That's on this article right here. This was on December 12th, 2017. It says, what if Muslims army was established against Israel? Now, this, this article comes from the Yeni, uh, Yeni Safak, which is an Arabic loyal to Erdogan news uh, online news source. It's a Turkish news source, but very loyal to President Erdogan. If the member states of the OIC unite militarily, which by the way, Erdogan, I believe is the head of this, they will form the world's largest and most comprehensive army. 
The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the OIC, which was established in 1969 following the criminal arson of Al-Aqsa Mosque in occupied Jerusalem, will meet in Istanbul on Wednesday for an extraordinary summit to discuss Jerusalem following U.S. President Donald Trump's decision last week to recognize the holy city as Israel's capital and relocate the U.S. Embassy to the city. It is expected that clear message and steps against Israel will emerge as a result of the summit. Now, after this, this is already this meeting has already happened. Some believe it was just a failure, but notice what it says. The OIC is the second largest intergovernmental organization after the United Nations, which membership of 57 states across four continents. The organization is a collective voice of the Muslim world and can sign military and economic sanctions. If the member states of the OIC unite militarily, they will form the world's largest and most comprehensive army. The number of active soldiers would be at least 5,206,100,000, while the defense budget would reach approximately 175 billion. And there's your Arabic states all together. Erdogan, of course, is seen in the front row at the center. The Saudi kingdom as well. All these kingdoms, even Iran, all of them are pitted against Israel to begin with. Oh, they say the Saudis are for Israel right now. Remember, though, they are willing to lie or do whatever they have to until the day of reckoning comes. All right? Now, this is when I go to stand for Israel. This is, this is my people, my country, my nation. But I do not stand for the Rothschilds, and I do not stand for the globalists, and I do not stand for Rome wanting to internationalize Jerusalem and putting a United Nations force there, which was leaked in President Trump's peace deal. But will the United States or even Russia be in a, in a, in a, in a position to negotiate anything after Rome gets its way and ignites a war between these two superpowers? You see, when I have been watching what's happening in the Middle East, yes, I reported this clear as day. When Russia came down, I said, if you'll notice, Russia didn't come to defend militarily President, uh, President uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad, not until they had signed a deal with Gazprom to get the gas off the coast of Syria and the oil rights inside of Syria. This is why Russia is there. This is also why the United States decided to work with the Kurds when it didn't work with ISIS and they began to come in there without any invitation from the Syrian government whatsoever. And they secured all the oil fields on the eastern side of the Euphrates. Now, wait a minute. That's not even part of the greater Babylon uh, region. This is not the former Babylonian kingdom being reestablished once again, nor is it even the promise that was given to Abraham. I have given unto you from the Nile all the way to the Euphrates. That's the east of the Euphrates. Wait a minute. What are we doing over to the east of the Euphrates then? You see, they're going to use the United States and the NATO forces for one purpose. To make sure the land is liberated. And then they're going to make sure that the United States and Russia go to war and just obliterate one another to a place to where whoever is left, and it may be a short-term nuclear war, there's a lot of talk of that going on, to where when they're done, they are no longer superpowers. Nationalism will be destroyed, as we have reported, was a New World Order agenda. If they couldn't do it with climate change, as the insider told me that was close to Gulen Fagan, they would take and use a nuclear war between Russia and the United States to destroy nationalism. Okay, now, so this is Erdogan's objective, and he's calling on these states to come against Jerusalem. There are 160,000 active soldiers in Israel's forces, and their defense budget is 15.6 billion. One of the decisions that could emerge from the OIC summit is to establish a Jerusalem duty group in which a few countries protect the city. In this regard, military steps are expected to be taken. The establishment of a possible Muslim army would ensure that Israel is militarily surrounded. All right, there's your image. These are your 57 nations, almost all of Northern Africa, all of uh, you know, Yemen and, and Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Syria. You know, they were calling on all of these nations to come against one country, that's Israel. 
And then everybody wants to say, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Gog and Magog war, that's Russia. Why isn't Russia included then? As you can see, this is Russia right here, goes on up over there above Angolia and those places there. Russia's not even included there, are they? Oh, I know, some people think that the scripture says the outermost part of the north. No, the word in Hebrew is the flank. It's the side of the north, not the outer furthest part of the north. Let's take a look though, as we go along though. Let's continue on. Now, the Jerusalem Post, they brought out an article, Putin not remotely anti-Semitic, says Russian chief rabbi. You gotta be kidding me. Now here Erdogan is, so angry, can't stand Israel to begin with, and constantly, constantly talking about they got to go protect the Palestinians and take back what belongs to Palestine and, and, and calling the Israel, Israeli people living in the land their occupiers. Putin, not rem remotely anti-Semitic, says Russian chief rabbi. According to the Russian chief rabbi, Putin was the first Russian president to attend the opening of the synagogue or any other Jewish event. Do you know also Russia was the first state to recognize Israel as a state? That wasn't even under Putin. Here you have a picture of President Putin. He's with the chief rabbi uh, in Israel, excuse me, over in uh, Russia there. This was the opening of the Museum for Israel and for, for Religious Tolerance there. Uh, says Jewish Museum Tolerance and Center of Moscow on February 19th of 2013. It says the controversy stirred up by Russian President Vladimir Putin, who in recent interview with NBC's Megyn Kelly suggested that Jews might be responsible for election meddling in America, did not raise as much an eerie among Russian Jews as it did elsewhere in the Jewish world. Russian Chief Rabbi Beryl Lazar who is currently in Israel in a public conversation on Monday night with Steve uh, Linde, editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem Report, told a packed auditorium in Beit Avi Chai in Jerusalem that Putin is not remotely anti-Semitic and that he was the first Russian president to attend the opening of a synagogue or any other Jewish event. Lazer contended that Putin had listed several options as to who could have meddled in the elections of the Jews and had uh, Jews had been included, not because of anti-Semitism, but because in Russia, Jews are considered to be very clever and powerful. And this is simply confirmed, confirmed that belief. All right. Now he goes on into the whole issue about this. He, uh, like he says, former leaders Boris Yeltsin and Mikhail Gorbachev were friendly to the Jews, but Putin was the first to say that Jews had the same rights as anyone else, declared Lazar. And he began to change the way things were ran in Russia. So here's what's strange, friends. You know, we've got all this talk about Putin being the king of the north, the Gog of Magog, and that he's going to be the one that comes against Israel. And some people say, what's well, the hooks in the jaw? I don't see it. I've always said it would be a NATO member. And the king of the north, the Melchizedek, the hidden king, as it's called, is a Roman leader. And by the way, when you look at that, let me see if we pull up real quick the map here. Let's just pull up maps here. I want to just make it a little bit clearer here because we're going to get into the scripture here real quick in just a moment here. Uh, Google Maps. So let's back way out here so we can kind of get a better picture. We're getting out of Prague here. Go over here to Israel. All right. Now, Israel is right here. Directly due north of Israel, of course, is Turkey. But if it's a flank, if it's a side of the north, which is what it actually says, then due north and to the side would be Rome, Greece, any of those countries there, or the Roman Empire back it was in the ancient days. All right? And according to biblical prophecies, and I've shared that with you before, I don't have it up right now, Rome was considered to be the seat of the northern kingdom okay so let's just keep those things in mind as we're looking at this now we move on we also have the sanhedrin calls on arabs to take their role in the third temple as prophesied by isaiah that's interesting well don't worry the pope of rome will make sure that that place is taken because he's going to use erdogan and his arab thugs to come down after they have russia and the united states destroy one another 
Not totally. I don't believe it'll be a total annihilation, but to a place to where there's nothing we can do to help anybody. And then Erdogan will be the dominant force. With all the Arab nations to come down, there's prophecy still yet to be fulfilled, friends. Now, by the way, too, in that article that I mentioned from uh, the Turkish newspaper there, they also mentioned Pakistan playing a key role because they are the only nuclear-armed Muslim nation that they could use to help fight this battle. It says, uh, here's another one here from Turkey on RT. We can suddenly come. Turkey's Erdogan puts all Kurdish-held towns in Syria and Iraq on notice. We can suddenly come. In this article right here, after what he did to Afrin, genociding the country, or the, the, the city there inside of Syria, he's now let the Kurds know they can come anytime they want and take down any city they so desire. And he says he'll even go into Iraq and do it. Totally unimpeded by NATO's allies. And the genocide that these people have done, and again, I realize this is not speaking of all the Turkish people. I'm not against Turkish people at all. But that one leader, just like in Rome, I'm not against the Catholic people. But that one wicked, evil leader can destroy an entire world. All right, let's move on. 21st Century Wire. Will Syria be a battleground for an all-out war between Russia and America? That's exactly what I'm talking about. I think this one's actually written by Elijah Magnier. He said, this is not about Syria nor about the war on its soil. It's all about an open war between the axis led by the United States of America. Let me blow this up so you can see this. I want you to be able to see what I'm reading as well. Um, United States and America, Europe and their allies in the Middle East, uh, against, East against the axis led by Russia and its allies. It's a war about control, influence, and dominance in the Middle East and the rest of the world. It is, a, it is natural for the U.S. to resist the loss of its unilateral dominant status that has held since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 until 2015. September 2015 is the date when Moscow decided to send its force, Navy, and some ground special forces to the Levant and to announce its presence in the world there and give birth to its superpower capability after decades of absence. Again, in my opinion, it's Rome pushing these two to war. If you ever look at what happened in Ukraine, both sides, this is what's so interesting to me, the Russian Orthodox Church, their leaders would come in to the soldiers of the eastern side of Ukraine, where they were mostly ethnic Russians, and they were blessing and sprinkling holy water on their fighters. Supposed to be Christians, right? And then the Roman Catholic priests were coming in to the neo-Nazis, and they were sprinkling holy water on them and blessing them to go and fight and kill all those of the east. Supposed to be Christians too, correct? Correct. Can anybody tell me why Christians fight against Christians? I mean, does it make any sense to you? Do you know why China is a communist nation? It's the same reason Russia was a communist nation at one time. Jesuits. To make sure they stomp out anything that doesn't agree with their agenda. And the only church that can survive in China is a Catholic church. Oh yeah, there's trouble in this, between church and state. Sure there is. But it's one religion allowed to thrive. Just like it was in the Soviet Union. Now also we have here, U.S. preparing strikes on Syria, carry a strike group set up in the Mediterranean, according to the general. Uh, uh, general. Sergei Rudskoy uh, added that the groups of striking carriers that carry cruise missiles have been deployed in the Mediterranean and Red Seas. You know that little boy Nathan, I believe he was right. Obama got it started, so don't think that Obama's out of the picture. No, he calls Obama Gog. I don't agree with that. Maybe. We'll see. And maybe, maybe uh, he'll come back into some kind of power before it's over with. Who knows? All right. Also, Islamic State takes Damascus after rebels pull out. ISIS is back on the move again. And they took over some areas there from, from the other side there. All right, now, let's move on, though. I want to get now to the biblical scriptures behind the things that we're talking about here. 
Let's first go over, we're going to look at Ezekiel 38. I want to start here. After many days thou shalt be mustered for service. In the latter years thou shalt come against the land that is brought back from the sword. Israel, of course. That is gathered out of many peoples against the mountains of Israel, which have been continual waste, but is brought forth out of the peoples, and they dwell safely, all of them. And thou shalt ascend, thou shalt come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many peoples with you. Going to come down like a storm. Doesn't that sound so much like Daniel's prophecy in chapter uh, 11, verse 40? And at the time of the end shall the king of the south, which is the Melech Nagiv. All right, let me just show you where that's at so you can see this. Melech Nagiv. all right. The Melech, the king, Hanagiv. That's not the word south in Hebrew. That's the king of the Negev Desert. The Negev Desert sits in the modern state of Israel. The only person ever given the title of king in modern days is Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I'm not against Prime Minister Netanyahu when I say it. I'm just telling you what it says. All right? And at the time of the end shall the king of the south... Now, they put on there the word push at him. Let me highlight that for you. Push at him. That's what they translated as, push at him. But the problem is, that's not what it says. Let's go to where it, what it says. It says, emo, push with him. Now, you know, just for the sake for people to know what I'm talking about, I just did it with Google Translate. We'll just do it simple. So I put the biblical word here, emo, okay? Vowels included. What does it mean? With him. All right, now let's make it a little bit more plain so you can see everything. Im, okay, translation of im is with. It is the most clearest definition within, beside. So you can say he pushes with him, within him, beside him, near him, but not against him. It makes no sense to translate it any other way than emo, with him. Modern Hebrew, we say emo, we say that means with him. Anybody that knows anything about Hebrew should tell you this. And if they tell you otherwise, they're doing it for an agenda. All right? So, we come back to the scripture. So at the time of the end shall the king of the south push with him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow as he passes through. Now, it also, again, let's look at it again. And the king of the north shall come, not against him, Aliyav, it is over him, or upon him, over him, Aliyah. Take it in conjunction. If he's pushing with him, if they're working together, he comes over like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen with many ships and shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as, as he passes through. Taking out the whole entire Middle East. Oh, don't worry. Israel comes next. Okay? They work together in the beginning. So when you go back and you look at Ezekiel 38, let's look at the... Oop, I accidentally messed it up. Let's... let's Pull that one back up. Run back to history real quick. Let's get Ezekiel 38 back up and going here. All right. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall come to pass in that day that things shall come into thy mind. Thou shalt devise an evil device. And thou shalt say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages, and I will come upon them that are quiet and dwell safely, and them that are dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. There you go. There's your Israel. To take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thy hand against the waste places that are now inhabited against the people. Now, some people believe that the spoil is speaking about the oil. Well, I haven't taken the opportunity to do it, but I thought about it earlier, and I'd just like to look at this real quick. Erdogan, okay, Palestinians and oil. Let's just see. Now, I do believe, and I have seen where uh, we know that the uh, President Putin signed an agreement with the Palestinian Mahmoud Abbas for the oil rights there. But I want to see if there is actually an article out there about Erdogan. Erdogan's concerned E&I exploration with Cyprus. There's another one right there. 
Um, let's see what we got right on this one right here. ENI oil exploration with Cyprus. Okay, Erdogan is concerned about the ENI oil exploration with Cyprus. Now, Cyprus is not Israel, but let's just back up then. Let's see, uh, Erdogan. Okay, we'll try disputes. Israel oil claims. Let's just see what we come up. Turkey Deputy Prime Minister claims Israel's falsely accused local Turkish aid. That's not it. Okay. Israel drilling madness calls Cyprus Israel drilling madness. Hmm, Erdogan denies Turkey buying oil from ISIS. Okay, let's just look at this one right here and see what we come up with here. September 21st, 2011. And he says, uh, Prime, uh, Turkish Prime Minister Tiyap Erdogan describes offshore gas drilling by a strange ally Israel and Cyprus as madness on Wednesday, raising the stakes in a confrontation over potentially huge deposits in the eastern Mediterranean. The quarrel over gas has escalated in recent weeks and just as relations between Turkey and Israel abruptly broke down over Israel's refusal to apologize for a deadly raid on a Turkish flotilla last year. Now, I didn't even bother to do any in-depth research, but I'm sure if you guys did, you'll see that Erdogan has a good reason to want to come and fight also for oil, if we're just taking it from that standpoint alone. Going back to Ezekiel's prophecy here, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the magnates, uh, magnates thereof shall say unto thee, Comest thou to take a spoil? Hast thou assembled thy company to take the prey, to carry away silver and gold and to take cattle? You know, so the point is, this whole issue about the Gog of Magog war I believe is Turkey and their allied forces that will come with them. Remember, they are a NATO member. And even though the U.S. and Russia may destroy each other, or at least weaken themselves to the place of no longer being world powers, Turkey could easily rise up to be the true caliphate of this day and age. And the Pope will ride that beast like never before. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the end of days and I will bring them against my land that the nations may know me when I shall be sanctified through thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, art thou he who, whom I spoke in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel that prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass in that day when God shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall rise up in my nostrils. For in my fear jealousy, in the fire of my wrath, have I spoken. Surely that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the ground. And we can go on and on and on. But the point is, this is when God begins to fight for Israel. It's not over Russia in the United States fighting. It's not over Syria and something could spill over into Israel as a result of that. It's going to be after the two superpowers are taken down, when the twin, when the towers, the, the tower Migdal Eder here, when they begin to fall through a great slaughter. That's when the caliphate of Turkey will begin to rise. This is when the Gog of Magog battle, this is the, the, uh, the battle that will ensue here. And they talk about, you know, it says here in verse 17 that God, he said that he he'd, he'd spoke these things in a time of old by my servants of prophets. It's very difficult to know for sure which prophets that he's speaking about. I've, I've wondered if it's Micah, if it's, it's Hosea, um, not particularly the Psalms. Psalms does show the, the um, uh, we have Zechariah, there's some scholars believe it's Zechariah 14, Behold, a day of the Lord cometh, when thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses uh, rifled, and the women ravished. And that's a battle never happened in Israel yet. And with Erdogan being a NATO member, and whatever NATO states are still surviving, would join with him, because many of them hate Israel anyway, and then get the Arabic nations as well. He's got a very powerful force that'll come against it, and he is one of the largest powers in the Middle East. With, I think, a thousand warplanes, for example. He has his own navy, his own submarine, I think eight submarines, something like that. Very vast navy for, for a small nation. All right. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against these nations as when he fighteth in the day of battle, just like we see in Ezekiel. See, God does intervene. Then we also have over here in uh, the book of Isaiah, 
The oxes likewise and the young asses that till the ground shall eat savory provender, which hath been winnowed. See? Oh, I'm sorry, that's where we talked about the towers falling. Forgive me for that. Didn't want to go back over that, but I think this is Micah. Uh, in Micah we have here, this is speaking about um, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, that though I am fallen, I shall arise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord is a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Then mine enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her who said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall gaze upon her and no, n now shall... Uh, shall she be trodden down as a mire of the streets? The day of building of thy walls, even that day, shall be far removed. Okay, there shall be a day when they shall come from come unto you from Assyria, even to the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt, even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. And the land shall be desolate for them that dwell therein, because the fruit of their own doings. It doesn't say the word own doings, but their doings. They've made Syria a complete mess. And every one of them bear responsibility. Modern state of Israel bears